Come on, everybody. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. I'm so excited about tonight. I'm excited about a hyphen rally. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have got, we have got young people in hyphen from Woodbridge here, Lynchburg, Richmond, Norfolk, Chesapeake, and I promise you, I think Franklin's in the house, um, Emporia. All right, we got people from everybody, from everywhere. So good to be in God's house. There's such an expectation in the atmosphere. Amen. I'm excited to see what God is going to do. I challenge you tonight, if you need something tonight, you came to the right place because God's got something for you. Is there anybody here that's got that witness that knows what I'm saying is true? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, Joshua 6 and 20, the word says, So the people shouted with the, when the priests blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpets, and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down. You see, for six days, Joshua told the Israelites to march around Jericho, but on that seventh day, something happened. On the seventh day, they marched seven times. And on the seventh time, when the priest blew the trumpets, he said, lift your voices with a shout. Now, believe it like you want to, but I think they were apostolics. Apostolics just don't holler with no reason. When someone tells us to shout to the Lord, we understand that means to praise the Lord. Oh God, you're wonderful. God, you're perfect. God, you're great. God, you're the way maker. I wonder if we can start this service out that way. Can you lift your voices with praise? Can you worship God right now? God, you're my everything. God, I come to you tonight. I trust you all together in one mind, one accord. Let's worship God and lift his voice up with praise right now. Let's worship with the praise team and let's praise God. Welcome to the Hyphen Rally tonight. You came to the right place tonight. Let's worship the Lord.
to praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. You say, all of my fear, I will turn into shake off, shake off despair as I, as I sing out your name. name.
We could just lift up that name real quick. Hallelujah. They said he reigns. That means he reigns over fear. He reigns over depression, over anxiety. I wonder if we could take whatever need we have and dethrone that thing real quick. And let's put Jesus back in his place in our lives. God, we thank you, Jesus. Somebody's struggling with depression. There's people that are struggling with suicide. But I wonder if we could let God reign. Hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you, God, and we magnify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may return to your seats. Hallelujah. I like what I feel in the house. Amen. Hey, Amen. If you ain't feeling something, you're probably broken. <laughs> but God is here. I welcome all of you to this wonderful hyphen rally. I give honor to Bishop Cunningham for allowing us to use this beautiful facility. We're thankful for that. You guys can be seated, by the way. And I'm thankful for the staff that has been working as well, behind the scenes, the music, audio, visual, everybody that's gone to put work in to make this happen. And I'm thankful for that. Amen. Amen. We're thankful for wonderful leadership as well in this Virginia district. My name is KJ Towns. I am, uh, I am the Virginia district hyphen director. And I'm thankful for the opportunity to be a part of such a great movement that's taking place in the Virginia district. What comes to mind is when Jesus had his disciples fishing and they began to fish and the nets began to break, it said that they had to call to other ships to come and help them because it was too great for where they were. And what I feel like with hyphen is our pastors and our bishops and our leaders are called to a great harvest, but it's gonna to be too much for them to handle on their own. It's time for some other ships to exit the port and begin to go out in the sea and begin to gather in the field. And that's what I feel for 
hyphen. Now, there's an astonishing figure. I believe it was 90% of people that graduate on from a youth group and become hyphen will backslide. 90%. It is time for us as hyphen, those that are in college, those that are working on the workforce. My vision, I did vision casting at our conferences, and I'm thankful for God meeting us at every conference. We've had gifts of the Spirit flowing, tongues and interpretation, people getting the Holy Ghost and baptized in the name of Jesus at hyphen events, and I'm thankful for that. But we have so many college campuses we have so many neighborhoods. We have so many churches that need more help from the younger generation. And so what God has been dealing with me about is with hyphen in the 2024 season, we are going to be pinpointing each district that we can just pick a day and go help, whether that be outreach, whether that be help that pastor do, teach a Bible study or something, but it's time for Hyphen to start getting with your bishops, uh, getting with your pastors and finding out what is your vision and what is your direction for this city. And I'm not just gonna sit over here and clean my nets. I'm going to put my nets uh, to use. I'm gonna use the strength uh, that I have to take on the vision uh, of my leadership. Amen. Hyphen is not just about figuring out what you want to do. It's about just finding out what, God, what do you want me to do? Uh, and I'm going to go do it. Amen. So we're excited about what God's going to be doing in the rest of this year and in 2024. We're excited about what God's going to be doing in the Virginia district, uh, not just through the generation that's gone before us, but the one that is here and the ones that are coming up after. We're going to pave a way and take this baton and this retail re Relay race, sorry, I said retail. Woo, come on, somebody. <laughs> In this relay, and we're going to run this race. Amen. And we're going to make some headroom. So I want us also to turn your attention to the screen because we have our general hyphen director for the UPCI Virginia Zone, Brother Travis Worthington, has a message for us. Amen. Hello to all of my friends in the Virginia District. I am so excited about what God is doing amongst hyphens, not just in our district, but also nationally. For those of you that may not know me, my name is Travis Worthington. I'm the National Hyphen Director of the United Pentecostal Church. I'm so excited about what God is doing. We just came off an amazing North American Youth Congress where we've seen thousands of people impacted. And I want to encourage you to take part in some of the things that are happening nationally. We've just launched our Hyphen podcast. I would encourage you to go check it out. It's an amazing resource that will impact you and helping you to take the call. Also, we have our Hyphen conference, our national Hyphen conference is next year. I would encourage you right now to make plans to go to San Diego, California, road trip, get those tickets, and let's have a great time. If you are curious about the other resources, we have Hyphen Real McCoy. Go to hyphenonline.org and you will find out all of the things that are happening. Follow us on our social media to stay in the loop. Tonight, I'm very excited that you have a very special speaker. Brother Brian Kinsey is an amazing man of God. He is going to impact you all. And I believe that tonight lives are going to be changed. I'm praying for each of you and the best is yet to come for our hyphens, not just this year, but also in the future. God bless you. Have a great service. I decided to be a part of the history that has helped spread the gospel around the world. From the beginning, the commission was to go. In order for his mission to be fulfilled, you are called to move the mission. We're commissioned to give, and when you invest, you share the gospel around the world. 
every dollar you sacrificially, generously give represents a missionary having a vehicle to be able to travel to countries and villages and share the gospel. Move the Mission has unlocked three countries to be able to hear about the oneness of God for the very first time. Your sacrifice represents a church planner receiving a grant to be able to plant a church in a community that is desperate for Jesus. Hope through Two Globe Children's Mansion, New Beginnings, and the Boys Ranch is offered because of your giving. Your district youth camps and events are made possible by Move the Mission. Events like North American Youth Congress and the Youth Ministry Training Event and ministries like Project 7 Bible Clubs, Apostolic Youth Corps, Bible Quizzing, Hyphen, Campus Ministry International are all possible because of Move the Mission. Go. We've bought a plane for a missionary, unlocked countries, brought hope, helped ministries. What's next? I will move the mission. Praise the Lord. Why don't you say, move the mission. Move the mission is the official youth ministries uh, offering, national campaign offering, goes to so many different ministries other than youth ministries, but is inclusive to youth ministries. What also falls under youth ministries is hyphen. How many of y'all are so appreciative of this hyphen rally here tonight? So glad to be in the house of God. Amen. Last year, as a district, Virginia District Youth Ministries and Hyphen broke a record giving of over $100,000. I believe it was around $125,000 to move the mission last year. Amen. Praise God. Just want to remind you that this offering date, the national offering date is coming this Sunday. However, you will have two additional weeks to get your offerings into your churches and your churches to get them and report them to the district. Someone say, it's not too late. Amen. I want to share something with you rather quickly. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 5. And the New Living Translation says, Now I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, what God in his kindness has done through the churches in Macedonia. They are being tested by many troubles, and they are very poor. But they're also filled with abundant joy, and which has overflowed in rich generosity. For I can testify that they gave not only what they could afford, but far more. And they did it of their own free will. And they begged us again and again for the privilege of sharing the gift for the believers in Jerusalem. How many of you know giving is beyond yourself? It is a privilege to give and bless others in the kingdom of God, to give and bless missionaries, to give and bless the Tupelo's children mansion, to give and bless Bible quizzing. It's a privilege to be able to give. And even when you don't have it, the Bible says he recognized not only those who can afford to give, but just like Jesus did with the widow woman with the two mites, he took notice that she gave not out of her abundance, but out of her necessity. And God is watchful of your worship and how you give. Could we all stand for just a moment and go to the Lord in prayer? And I want you to ask God, if you have not yet committed to give to move the mission, it is not too late. You can give and make an impact nationally, internationally upon the kingdom of God and the missionaries that are serving. Why don't we all lift our hands and pray. And then in a moment, you're going to have an opportunity to give. And you can also make it a, a commitment tonight and say, Lord, what would you have me to give? Let us all lift our voice and our hands to the Lord. Lord, we thank you today for your goodness and your mercy. God, we thank you for the privilege of worshiping you in our giving. And God, I pray you would get, uh, bless every giver. God, I pray you would open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that they don't have room for as they become stewards, Lord, of your blessings. God, financially, I pray that you would move on the hearts of your people, every student, every hyphen, every adult. God, what you would have them to give, what you have placed in their heart, Lord, as they would give cheerfully unto you, Lord. And I pray you would bless the remainder of this service today as we continue to worship you, not only in our giving, but in our praise, in our worship, and in our zeal for you, God. We love you. We bless you today. And in Jesus' name, you can make your way to the offering baskets down below. We'll give your offerings to the Lord as they worship and praise as we give.
worship with us tonight. excited about being in the house of the Lord tonight? 
on this Friday night to worship God. Praise God. It's good to see all of you here this evening. Sit down just for a second, if you will. I know you'll be back up. I told them we don't need to build a new building. We just need to take the chairs out of the church, make more room. We don't use them very often, do we? Praise God. Welcome to Bible World. All of you that are from Section 1, we're thrilled to have you here tonight. For all of our hyphens, glad to have you here tonight. What's the top age of hyphen? 29. If you're 29 or under, stand back up real quick. 29 or under. Oh, look at that. Give them a great hand, will you? <laughs> Praise God. You may be seated. I fully expected Sister Cunningham to stand up. She didn't do it. Oh, they were bothering you. Okay. Amen. We have some very special guests here tonight that uh, they're super special to me and super special to Bible World. I'd like for all of our folks that are here from Emporia, would you stand? If you're here from Emporia. Look at that. It's our brand new daughter work in Emporia. First time young people at a hyphen event. Well, we're glad you're here. And also important tonight, all of our young people that are here, all of our folks that are here from Franklin, would you stand? Another daughter work, first time being a hyphen meeting. We're thrilled you're here. God bless your hearts. We're so proud of these folks and their works and what God's doing with them and through them. Just a real special honor to have you here. And our prayer is, is that God will touch every one of you before you go back to Franklin and Emporia tonight. Also, I have two very, very special personal friends here tonight. And that's Brother and Sister Hill. Bishop Hill, Sister Deborah Hill, would you both stand, please? I want to introduce you to all these great young people tonight. God bless you. God bless you. Our advertisement is about ready to go out, but on Sunday night, help me real quick. September 17th, on Sunday night, we're having our second unity service for all of Hampton Roads. We're bringing together all the apostolic churches, no matter what group they belong to. We had a wonderful one last time. Bishop Hill is our special speaker at the next one. Sunday night, September 17th. We're excited about that. I've talked to seven or eight different bishops today. And everyone I've talked to today has said, we will be there. We'll have people there. I'm hoping we've got standing room only that night. Probably will have standing room only on that night. We're going to have a great time. Bishop Hill, we're going to be praying for you that God will use you that night. God bless you folks. And I want to invite you now before you get out of here tonight, come back to the office. I want to introduce you to Brother Kenzie, if you would. When I told Bishop Hill... Uh, maybe it was yesterday, not today. I told him, I said, Brother Kenzie, our guest speaker's from Pensacola. And Bishop Hill said, my, all of my family lives in Pensacola. So I want you to meet this great man of God here tonight. Aren't you glad you belong to the body of Christ? I'm telling you, folks, it's wonderful. It's exciting to belong to the body of Christ. Praise God. Stand back with me again, if you will. It is my pleasure to introduce to you one of my favorite preachers in the whole world. I love this man. I love his walk with God, the anointing that's on his life. He pastors a fabulous church in Pensacola, Florida, and it's just a thrill to have him here tonight. For all of the Bible world folks, we'll be doing minister's training tomorrow. We have prayer at 9.30. Minister's training starts at 10.00. 
first class, second class starts at 11. Brother Kenzie will be speaking in both of those classes tomorrow. You don't want to miss it. Be here early for prayer. Would you put your hands together and welcome our very special guest speaker tonight. There's such an anointing in this house. There's such a spirit of worship on this congregation. I think you ought to entertain the presence of the Lord and press your way into it. Touch the hem of his garment and let the virtue of the Almighty flow into your spirit. It'll change you into the person you need to be. It'll defeat every sin. It'll break every chain. It'll give you liberty and freedom. Come, come into the river and enjoy the freedom and the joy of the Lord. Let's dance in the river where the joy and the freedom of God's Spirit operates. Woo! How many of you are thankful you're free? You're free from addictions. You're free from bad habits. You're free from bad attitudes. You have been set free. Well, maybe not all of you on the attitude part. Might have been stretching that just a little bit, but you can be free before you leave here. Hey, you can get a good attitude. I am not here to preach you into a good mood. I hope you came to church in a good mood. You ought to walk in here with a passion. You ought to walk in here with a desire to worship. I give honor to Brother and Sister Cunningham, wonderful and powerful leaders in the kingdom of God, and we love you. Brother Cunningham has taught me so much, instructed me so much, and I have just been blessed by his vision, his leadership, and his friendship over the years. Now, in Pensacola, we have connected with this Bible World Church in prayer and in the Holy Ghost where the anointing that is on us would flow to you and the anointing that is on you would flow to us. And so we've gone to call to wars. We have about two to 300 people attend call to war in prayer. We just go to God in prayer. And we bring this church, Brother and Sister Cunningham, in prayer in a spirit of unity to create breakthrough, to fulfill the vision to anoint the training, to start churches. Whatever the vision is, we want to see it accomplished. And Brother Cunningham was telling me before church that there hasn't been a service. They hadn't had somebody baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost in however long. And, and the same things happen in Pensacola. We, there's not a service that goes by that we don't baptize two or three people. Three or four people get the Holy Ghost. It's every week. It's Wednesday night. It's Father's Day, Mother's Day. It is time for the church to be the church and to see God move in the dimension that he did in the book of Acts. Does anybody want to be a part of that story? Well, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. So I'm going to let you be seated, but I want you to go down clapping. I'll read my text in a moment. When I was 19 years old, Brother Ed Lucas in Illinois asked me to come preach, and I preached for him a revival. And he was invited to a missionary conference in Bloomington, Indiana at Brother Kirby Tiller's church. Now, Brother Cunningham would remember Brother Ed Lucas for sure. And for me, it was my very first missionary conference that I had ever attended. Now, this is how long ago it was, and do not laugh. You will be as old as I am if you live. <laughs> Brother Ed Tilly and Brother Jeffrey Norris were on their first deputation travel. That's how long ago it was. And the Lord spoke to me and told me to take them on as missionaries. And I was just a struggling evangelist. I didn't have the money to pay any missionary. And the Lord said, you do it as a commitment of faith. I will take care of you. 
And so I did, and for over 30 years, I supported their ministry. Even when Brother Jeffrey came home in a wheelchair due to a hereditary genetic disorder, I continued to pay into his retirement. And I remember seeing him in a service in a wheelchair while I was preaching. And he was so happy. He was filled with joy. He was worshiping while I, he was my, my best supporter in that service, saying amen in a wheelchair. And it just moved my spirit. And, and what I gave them did not make or, bake, or, or break their, their dream of ministry. God was going to make sure that he fulfilled his promise in their lives, irrespective of my giving. So I asked the Lord, I said, God, I don't have enough money. Why do you want me to give to them when I can't make or break anything in their life? And the Lord said, they don't need your giving because I'm going to fulfill my vision in their life. But you need to learn to give. Because I want you to be a part of the story. And that principle has guided my life all my life. I don't give to be the star of the show. I don't worship to be the star of the show. I worship to be a part of the story. I'm not clapping my hands so somebody will think I'm spiritual and just applauding the performance. Pentecostals, we got to quit applauding performance and we need to start worshiping Jesus who made this all possible. We need to be a part of his story. I just want to be in on the story. There was a certain man in 1 Samuel 1, 1 through 3. This man's name was Elkanah. And he was about to birth the prophet that was going to speak the prophetic word that would produce the anointing that would come on King David that would slay the giant and bring Israel to the place of God's promise and purpose. Right. And Elkanah just decided, I'm going to be a part of the story. And I want you to notice something about his ministry and his life. And he went yearly to worship and to sacrifice at the, at the tabernacle. He went yearly to do this because he was convinced that that's exactly where his family needed to be, is in church. I learned when I was just a kid in your age that I'm going to be in church not because I need to be there, because I need to help somebody else, but to bring glory and honor to Jesus to accomplish his purpose and see his will done. I'm not here to make or break somebody's ministry. I'm just here to be a part of the story because there's an anointing in this house that I want to connect to and be a part of. And you can sit there and think you're all that in a bag of tater chips, but I've come to tell you that you still need your brothers and your sisters, uh, and you need to connect to their anointing in a spirit of unity. I'm coming into oneness with my brother. I'm coming into oneness with Brother Cunningham because I want to birth a prophetic word. I'm telling you that God is about to birth the prophetic word in this place. Somebody is about to bring forth a promise in their life. And God wants you to lay down every idol and anything that might be in the way of that, and he wants you to bring it forth. I know that, that Elkanah had two squabbling women in his life. Hannah had no children, and Penina did have children. And Penina was aggravating Hannah. And I know you ladies don't aggravate one another. <laughs> not, not in Virginia. I left all of them in Pensacola. And they was a fussing and a carrying on, and, and they just couldn't seem to get along. And Elkanah didn't know what to do with Hannah because she did not have children. But he was the one that initiated bringing his family to the house of God. And it was there that she decided, I will pray until God gives me my promise and I connect to the story of what God's going to do in Israel. They had no idea Samuel would be the Samuel that he became. They had no idea he would anoint the David. They, 
He just simply understood, I'm just going to the house of God to worship. I may not be special, and it may not be much to anybody else, but I'm going to make sure I'm in the house of the Lord. And if I'm in the house, then there's something that can happen. You never know what God's going to birth in your life if you'll just come in the house and worship. We don't need to sing your song. You don't need your... Whoa, you need to walk in here and believe that God can do it without your song. God can do it because the story is still more powerful than my problem. Hallelujah. Elkanah was a Levite priest from the lineage of the Kohathites. They carried the Ark of the Covenant. The Bible called him a certain man. God needed a prophet in Israel to speak that word into existence. His name means whom God has acquired. God just wanted this man on his team. And I believe that the Lord's looking at some hyphen young people, and he's trying to invite you, just join my team. There are benefits just being a part of the team. I may not be the star quarterback. I might be on the sideline, but I'm going to be cheering everybody on. And if I'm on the team and we score, then I scored. If I'm on the team, I still get the benefit of the win. I said, why don't you just join the team and say, put me anywhere you want me. I just want to be in on the story. I want to know that I'm a part. My God, I feel an anointing in this house. Now, you have to understand that Elkanah was going to church even though there was a lot of problems at church. Hophni and Phinehas weren't doing right. Eli wasn't doing right, the high priest. But he still went to church anyway because he was not going to allow the people that were messing up to mess him up. You say, well, I can't come to church because of all the hypocrites. Oh, well, come on. We've got room for one more. <laughs> well, there's sin in the church. As long as I've been in Pensacola for 23 years, there's been sin in the church for 23 years. I'm still trying to get it out. Every, we're going to have to pray and believe God because there's always going to be some carnal person around. But I'm not going to let their carnality stop me from being a part of the team and the story. Now, I love you, and I, and I thank God that you're here and you're just worshiping beautifully here tonight. But if you don't worship, I'm still going to preach good. So you might as well get over yourself because I don't need your worship to preach good. I've heard from God, and I'm here to declare his word. And I promise you, if you'll get on the team, something's going to be birthed in this house that will blow your mind. God wants to use you in the kingdom. There was turmoil in his home. There was turmoil at the church, but he worshiped God. There was sin everywhere. There was trouble and trial. There's immorality everywhere. One of his wives was barren. They were all fussing and carrying on, but he still worshiped God. And he came to the house of the Lord. And he did not allow the troubles at home. He did not allow the troubles at church. He didn't allow trouble anywhere to trouble him. Just because somebody else is troubled doesn't mean it needs to trouble you. And you don't have to get a bad attitude because somebody else has got a bad attitude. I mean, you've got an opportunity if somebody else has got a bad one for you to show them what a good one looks like. Instead of putting the five-fold ministry right upside their head, lift it up and praise the Lord. <laughs> so you've got to understand that God wants you to become what he wants you to be. And so you've got to come to the house of the Lord. El Cana lived by three principles. And I want to share three principles that I have tried to live all of my life that have served me. I just want to be a part of the story. And El Cana learned how to live above the sea level. 
In other words, he didn't let what he saw stop him from being the child of God that God wanted him to be. You say, but I see too much. I've had people say, I've seen too much. Shame on you. Because you're looking at the wrong thing. Quit looking at people's faults. Quit looking at every trouble that's going around. Quit focusing on the, what happened to your worship? Huh? I'm not here to sympathize with you. I'm here to spank you back into shape. It's time for somebody to do an attitude adjustment on you. Quit criticizing the singers in the platform. Quit criticizing everybody around you and live above the sea level. Get your eyes on Jesus. I've learned how to do that in my life. You don't know how I've been wounded and I've been mistreated. I don't care what's happened in your life. God's about to birth something in your spirit if you'll just walk in here and quit allowing the enemy to focus your attention on the wrong thing. You got to look at the right thing. You got to see things that are invisible. You got to see the eternal. You cannot allow the, the heart ailments and the troubles. The Bible says in Lamentations 3.51, mine eye affected my heart. So what you see is going to affect your spirit. Job said in Job 17, 7, mine eye is dim by reason of sorrow. Sorrow affects your sight. It just changes everything that you look at. One man said, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. If my eye be dim by reason of sorrow, then I believe that it can be cleared by reason of joy. If sorrow dulls your vision, I believe that joy will change it. Here's what I found to lift my eye level. I learned how to have joy in serving God regardless of what was happening in my life. And I don't know about you, but we've all gone through the last three years some very difficult times, but it has not stopped our church from growing. We have grown every year. We've got people getting the Holy Ghost. You know why? Because I refuse to sit around and gripe and complain about what I can't see, what I can't have, and what's not happening, and, and who's messing up, and who's doing crazy stuff. I just decided to get joy in the Holy Ghost and walk in the Spirit and have faith that my God is going to do what he wants to do in this house. Come on, somebody elevate your eye level. See him who is invisible and know that that invisible kingdom is fighting on your behalf. He's giving you strength right now. He's giving you hope. He's giving you peace. It's flowing in this place. I can sense it all over. And God's inviting you into the river. Come into the river of God and dance with the joy and dance for your freedom Dance because you're free in Jesus Christ. Elevate it right now in the Holy Ghost and say, I'm not going to just look at what's going on around me. I'm going to look at the Jesus that's already triumphed over everything. I don't have to feel special. I just got to be a part of the story. Brother Cunningham, I'll just sit on the front row. It doesn't matter. I'll sit on the back row. It won't matter where you put me. I'm going to worship anywhere I am in the house. I see elders worshiping and praising God. I see young people worshiping and praising the Lord. All together in one mind and one accord. We're not against one another. We're for one another. We're not fighting one another. We're on each other's team. We're fighting for the kingdom of God to advance. Will somebody, I said, will somebody get some joy in the house? You don't know what I've been through. Y'all may not know what you've been through, but I know what Jesus did for you. I know what he's about to do. If you'll come in here and worship, something will be birthed in your life that'll change you forever. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Here's the second principle that I've learned to live by. God is my only constant. He's the only thing that is an absolute in my life. He's my constant. You say, there's nothing absolute in this world. Nothing absolute but God. He's the rock. He's the constant. Every good and perfect gift cometh down from the Father of light in whom is no variableness or shadow of turning. In the midst of this changing world, man, you can buy a computer today and it'd be outdated in six weeks. We've got to have a constant. We've got to have something that is faithful. I've come to tell you that God is faithful. The Lord's mercies are new every morning and great is thy faithfulness. Jeremiah never had one convert, could not never point to anyone and say, I want him to the Lord. But he knew that God was faithful and that God would not forsake him. Some of you may not even like me right now, but I don't like you either, so we're even. Praise God. They say, well, I don't even like you, Brother Kinsey. That's fine, but God is my constant. I'm not here for you. I mean, I love you, and I want you to enjoy yourself in this service, but I am not here for your approval. I'm here to birth something in the Holy Ghost. I'm on the verge, Brother Cunningham, of one of the greatest breakthroughs that Pensacola has ever seen or ever had in its history, and I want to be a part of it, and I came here to get charged in the Holy Ghost with a powerful anointing. Will somebody join with me and say, God's my only constant? My heart is fixed. My heart is fixed. And you need a fixed heart to be able to walk with God and birth things in the spirit. God is my only constant. He's the one that never changes. Here's what I found when I'm walking with God every day and I'm doing my daily devotion. God is more real to me in those devotions than sometimes in a church service. I don't even have to wait for the church service to happen in order for me to get into a good mood. I just go into my closet of prayer, and then all of a sudden, God changes my mind and my spirit and my attitude, and I start loving all of you. Brother Hill, I want, if there's any of your family in Pensacola that have not served the Lord, I'm going to reach for every single one of them and see what the Lord will do. You never know what God will do. We are going after everybody. We're starting churches. We're training preachers. We're seeing people go out into the ministry, and God is going to be glorified by the work that is done. It's going to happen here. It's going to happen in Pensacola. We're joined together. I want to be a part of the story. Will you let me on the team? I can be second string. It doesn't matter to me. I'll be the Obadidum. I'll be the second string musician. But I've got to be in his presence. Uh, I've got to be in his presence. Uh, I've got to be in his presence. Uh, and I may not be able to depend on you and your mood swings to get into God's presence. Uh, so God is my constant. When I walk in here, I don't worship because I like the atmosphere. I worship because the Lord is able. I said he is able to deliver and save even to the other. The most. I feel like preaching in this house. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> David's the one that introduced hand clapping to worship. It was never done before David came on the scene and he told everybody to clap your hands, all you people. The rabbis teach that the reason why he introduced hand clapping to praise is because it reminded him of chain snapping and Israel walking out of Egypt as they were free from Egyptian bondage. My, 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 my. And so every time you clap your hands, all I can hear are chains snapping. And I can hear the enemy groaning because these people are recognizing they're no longer under my control. They're no longer under my influence. They're no longer under my power. I've, they've been freed from the power of Satan. 
Listen, church, this world has no power over you. You ought to take that authority right now in, in the Holy Ghost and say, God is my constant. I don't need another fix of energy from a great church service. I know who God is, uh, and he's never failed me, nor has he forsaken me. Lord God, I believe your word is true. God is faithful. Here's another principle that I've learned that has taught me much in the kingdom. There is no alternative to this. Where would I go from this? There's no place to go. There's no place in this world there's no place in this denominal world. We do a, a drama every year in our church, and literally we put 3,000 brand new people who have never been in our church, in our church over a three-day period. Over 1,000 new people come to our church during that drama. And every one of them, most of them are from other denominational churches in the area. And they say, Brother Kenzie, there is something in this place. What do you have that I have never felt at my church? And it's not the drama. <laughs> it's the, he said, we have dramas, but that's not like this one. There is something in this house. What is it? I said, it's the Holy Ghost. It's the power of God. It's, it's the God who is a, a constant. Why would I want to leave where I'm at and go to where they are and feel absolutely nothing? But every time I come to the house of God, I can't help it, church. There's no other alternative. There's no alternate source of power or glory. This is it. I said, this is it. There is nothing like this. There is nothing like the Holy Ghost. There is nothing like worshiping on a Friday night. There's nothing like seeing young people moved by the power of God. Nothing like it. There is no substitute for the real thing. You can have traditional services, contemporary services, but it does not matter. Without the presence of God, it means nothing. You can try to find a worship service that will appease and appeal to the masses, but there's no substitute for the presence of God. There's no other God beside him. He is omnipotent. He is omniscient. He is omnipresent. He does not know of another God. There is no God beside me. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Peter, when asked, will you also go away? Where are we going to go to find the words of eternal life? There is no place to go. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy, let my tongue cleave to the root of my mouth, and let my right hand forget its cunning. God it's got to be above everything. I said, God must be above your chief joy. Whatever brings you joy in this world, God's got to be one step above it. So let me declare to this church and declare it with anointing. There is no alternative. If he's God on Sunday, he's God on Monday. He's God in the good times. He's God in the bad times. God is God when you're up. God is God when you're down. God is God when you're sick, and he is God when you are well. He is God when you're healed, and he is God when you are disabled. I'm telling you, you don't need to look for a substitute. You need to go wash in the Jordan River, Naaman. You don't need to go back to Damascus. You need to wash where the prophet told you to wash. I believe if somebody would, would stand up right now and begin to clap their hands in worship, that God would answer the prayer you've been praying that has not yet been answered. <laughs> Hallelujah. Healing doesn't come from substitutes. 
It's not who prays for you. It's the power of the name. It's the power of the blood. It's the power of the cross. I feel chains snapping in this house. Somebody is getting free. I felt it when you stood up. You can be seated for a moment. Y'all are a bunch of crazy people. Y'all don't know how to behave while the preacher preaches. Just sit there nice and quiet and listen to him. Y'all got to jump up and shout and praise the Lord. And I say, do it. Praise God. I said, do it. You're not bothering me one bit. As a matter of fact, I welcome it. But somebody's been praying for a prodigal. Somebody's been praying for someone to come home, to come back to Jesus. And your heart is heavy because it hasn't happened yet. And you're stumbling just a little bit in your faith, not because you're a bad person, but because you just want to see it happen and it hasn't happened yet. But the Lord just showed me in the spirit, that boy, that girl is coming home. Some of you have served God in the heat of the day and you've gone through trial after trial. And some of those problems have caused their children to walk away. But God is about to bring them back right now. And you have felt despair in your spirit. As a matter of fact, within the next three weeks, God's going to bring them back. You're going to see them. I wish I could say that for everybody, but I don't know if I can say it for everybody, but I know there are people that are going to latch on. See, you didn't even know when you came to worship tonight there was going to be a prophetic word that was going to be spoken. I've come to tell you that the backsliders coming back to Bible world. Some of them walked away and said, I'll never come back. And I've come to tell you right now, Let me caution you because you don't want to have the spirit of the elder brother because when prodigals come back, sometimes they have a little slippery slope. and Sometimes you have a little resentment toward that individual and you need to keep your resentment in check because your resentment kills your joy. You got to live above that. I said, you got to live above that because you might feel a little resentment. It may be that something happened and you just have this bad feeling. You need to welcome them with open arms and leave their progress in the hands of God and their pastor. I, I wish y'all jump up and shout on that one. Get that ugly spirit off of you right now and don't you let that spirit get a hold of you. And you quit judging them and thinking that. I'm just shouting they're back. I'm shouting, just turn to your neighbor and say they're back. Let's throw a party. They're back. Let's celebrate. Let's have a good time. Joy clears the eyes. If sorrow dulls it, then joy makes it alive. It puts the fire back in your spirit. See, I gotta get I gotta rejoice over the revival God's given you just as much as what He's doing in Pensacola. I can't get mad because God's doing the work here and they're not doing the same thing in Pensacola. I'm glad that he is, but I can't get upset about that. I got to rejoice in what God's doing here. I, I'm telling you during this unity service this year, something powerful is about to happen in this community. There's not just going to be a revival in an isolated place. It's literally going to go all over these churches and they're going to see a breakthrough like they've never seen before. I wish somebody would claim that right now and get happy about it. Woo, I'm rejoicing. I said, I'm rejoicing. Elkanah knew he needed to be a part of the story. So he kept bringing his family to church. 
He had no idea Hannah was going to pray like she did, get slapped by Eli and ignore the insult. Well, I was insulted when I came to this church. Well, guess what the preacher has to go through about every week? <laughs> huh? Turn to your neighbor and say, huh? That's, that, the preacher goes through that every week. I mean, sometimes every day. There's an insult a month or insult a week. But you got to learn to get over insults. Because I'm praying to birth something other than just a, a resentment. I'm praying to birth a prophetic prophet that knows how to speak God's will into existence and purpose into existence. Ha, so he knew that he wanted to be a part of the story. Now listen to this. Consider Mary's alabaster box in Matthew 26, 13. He said, verily I say unto you, when she gave, and she gave willingly, and she gave joyfully, and she poured that ointment out on the body of Jesus, he said, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her. To put that simply, she's going to be a part of the story for the rest of the church age. And when I can't get a breakthrough any other way, I can tell that story and say that prophetic word was just now fulfilled in your hearing. Because when you're a part of the story, all you got to do is tell the story. All you got to do is tell the story. If you just tell the story, God will take it from there. Woo, Shandama. The story that he died for our sins. The story that he was buried in a bar of two. The story that he rose again on the third day. Just tell the story. Tell the story how you got saved. Tell the story how God found you. How many of you were drug addicts and alcoholics and doing everything you were big enough to do, but God found you and God redeemed you and God saved you? Tell the story. Amen. There's power not in the box. But in the story, David said it like this in the book of Psalms 87, 5 and 6. And of Zion it shall be said, this and that man was born in her, and the highest himself shall establish her, and the Lord's going to count. <laughs> now, I want to be in that number, because God's going to count who's here worshiping his name and just play in church. And then he's going to write up the people that this man was born there. I mean, I can say I'm born again, but if God says I count them in and they have been born and I'm going to put them in my story and I'm writing their name, I'm telling you they are born again. I hear, I hear the words spoken over this hyphen group right now. You have been born again. God has written you up. He's put your name in the story. And all you got to do is be born again to be in the story. You got to give because you love much. You may have to be broken, but you still can learn to praise even when you're broken in order to be a part of the story. I don't know of a single person that has ever done anything for God that was not insulted, tore down, mocked cruelly by those who did not understand their pursuit of the higher level. I've never known anybody. Everybody, don't crave and don't. Don't, don't lust after somebody's anointing. You don't know what they had to go through and what kind of brokenness it's in their life in order to get that anointing. 
Well, I wish I could preach like Brother Cunningham. Well, I wish I could too. But I, you better you better be careful because you better know what he's had to go through to get where he's at and to have the anointing on his life. I'm wondering, can you have joy? Some of you have not smiled one time in this church, and I'm not letting you go till you smile. You're going to be here. There's no Krispy Kreme donuts, and we're not ordering pizza either. You're not getting nothing tonight until you smile one time. If you're apostolic full of the Holy Ghost, how in the world is it you have no joy? I've been encountered with the number. I've been written into the story. Hey, 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 my brother, how do I get off this platform without killing myself? I'm not as young as I used to be. I've seen people jump off of platforms and then jump that much higher and come down and land like it ain't nothing. And I know if I did that, we'd be going to the hospital right now. But, but come up here, brother. I want you to sit right up here. You're going to be Jeffrey Norris. After I got finished preaching and I, and I saw his spirit, he was worshiping, he was crying, he was, he was about to die, and he knew it. And he put his arms around me. You're Jeffrey. You put arms around No, don't stand up. He couldn't stand up. <laughs> put the other arm. He said, Brian, there's things I'm not going to see in the ministry. But I want to thank you. You were my most faithful supporter. Now, you could count up all that I gave him, and it wouldn't have been enough. It wouldn't have been much more than a drop in the bucket. But I gave it, and I gave it cheerfully, and I gave it faith faithfully. But the last words I heard him say to me, you're going to see everything I've wanted to see in ministry. <laughs> Now, how can a man be in a wheelchair, come home from the mission field and prophesy like that over me and then me sit around and get mad because somebody did something or said something or somebody looked wrong? I will not do it. I will not do it. I'm going to live above sea level. I'm going to worship. I'm going to glorify his name. I'm going to be a part of the story. I'm in the story. My name is written and I'm counted among the number. This man was born there. So I, I can bear the heat of the day. And if this young man gets in at the 11th hour and five minutes before Jesus comes, he's baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. And he goes to the same heaven that I do, and I've been serving God all of my life. I've been preaching since I was 11, went full-time at the age of 17, and been that way ever since. And then he gets in on the 11th hour in five minutes. God gives him the same penny I get. 11th hour brothers get the same penny. Hallelujah. I said the 11th hour brother gets the same penny. Am I going to be mad at God because he's good to save this one? No, I'm living my whole life to get this brother in at the last minute. I say, come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Somebody needs to step out of where they're standing and say, I claim my victory right now. I claim my prodigal. I claim my prayer being answered. I claim it right now. Step out in that aisle and start believing it. I said, I claim my healing. I want you to walk up here and claim that healing. I want you to walk up here and claim what God has spoken. Claim what God has declared. I thank my God. I rejoice in what God's doing in Bible world. Oh, I want y'all to come on up and get as close to the front as you can. Let your toes 
touch the platform. Make room behind you so every, somebody's about to get victory in this place like never before. If we've got ministers and elders that can pray, I want you to go throughout this altar and I want you to pray for everyone that you possibly can. I need your help in this altar. I need your help to pray and believe God for their victory. Don't worry about your victory. God will cover you. You give him your heart. You let him use you right now. I feel something working in this place. God's my only constant. He's the only one I anchor my soul to. I live above sea level. I live knowing there is no alternative to what God is doing. What I have now, there's just no alternative to it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, double Kaziana. Kaya la 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 rabo ya shata maya diana. Koya da da diana ma. Glory to God. Kaya la 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 rabo shata bo kaya ranama. Oh yes, hallelujah. Come on, saints of God, I want you to lift your voice. I want you to pray like you've never prayed before. I want every prodigal to feel the angel of the Lord ministering to them right now. I want to see every sickness defeated. I want to see every heartbreak healed. I want to see you anointed for the mission and purpose I want to see you cry out and God birth something in your life right now that has long lasting effect that creates the greater, that creates the father of Jesus, the great, 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 great grandfather of Jesus that creates and perpetuates the lineage of Messiah. Jesus being the greater son Come on now, be a part of the story. You don't know what God will do. <laughs> Let the Holy Ghost come on you young people. I want you to burn something in the spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel something breaking right now in the Holy Ghost for somebody's life. Sometimes when you birth things, you have to travail. Oh, yeah, halalalabakaya ramaya shatiya. Ayalalaliya bakaya ranamosiya.
That's it, believe God. Trust in the Lord. Let the Holy Ghost come upon you. My, my, my. My word. I want you to lay hands on somebody around you. Every one of you, I want you to connect in the Holy Ghost because now it's time to come into unity in one mind and one accord. We're going to go to another level in prayer right now because we're going to come together as a body. And we are in one mind and one accord for the purpose of birthing the prophetic word that God is wanting you to experience in your personal walk and life. He wants to develop you. He wants to write you into the story. He wants to put you in the number. He wants to declare to the enemy and to the courts of heaven, this man was born there. This man was born there. This man
That's it. Lift your voice right now by the authority of the Word of God and by the power of the name of Jesus. Every prayer that hasn't been answered that is represented in this house, I release you to receive your answer. Everyone that's bound by a spirit of anxiety and panic and depression and the spirit of this world to put fear in your heart, I bind it right now in the name of Jesus. And you are free right now. You are free. That's it. Loose yourself from that. Get into the river and dance. While the Spirit of the Lord is in here like it is, would you lay your hand on somebody beside you? Don't speak English, Spanish, or any known language. Lay your hand on them and start praying in the Holy Ghost. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost for them like you want somebody to touch God for you. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Now I want you to move into being bold and praying in the Holy Ghost. I want you to get bold. Get bold in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Bear down. Hallelujah. Get bold in the Holy Ghost. Get bold in your praying for one another. I want you to be so focused on God that you know you're touching God for yourself and somebody else. You're not just going through the motions. I want you to focus on what you're doing. Focus on it. Let God use you. Now I want you to turn it into praise. I want you to be just as focused as you were when you were praying in the Holy Ghost. I want you to be just as focused. I want you to get into praising Him. Focus on Him. This is all about Him. Give Him your greatest praise. Is that your greatest? Give him your greatest praise.
I'm going to turn this service back to Brother Evans. This is actually his hyphen service. It's not my service. But I want to say to you, find the link to tonight's service. Now, that's about all I know about it is that it, there's some kind of link to it. You all in the back, make the link available to the preaching tonight, okay? Just the preaching. Not the whole service, just the preaching. Make the link available for the preaching. Sister Jane, where are you at? Sister Jane, Brother Rivera, I saw you a second ago. Oh, you're up here. I want it sent to every single person associated with Bible World Church. Every human being on PCO. I want them to get the link to this sermon tonight. And if you're here from another church and you want to get it, do that, please. Get that link. Take it to your pastor if he's not here. Tell him what I did and say, could we send this to all of our church? All it takes is a link. That can be sent in a text or an email. It's not hard to send at all. They click on the link. It'll take them to the sermon, and they can watch it right on their computer or laptop or iPad or whatever they've got on their telephone. This message needs to be heard by every person in the body of Christ. Every person in the body of Christ needs to hear this message. Amen? What you heard tonight. Anybody here interested in end time apostolic revival? Can I assure you that what you heard tonight has more to do with apostolic, end time apostolic revival than what some of us may know. Amen? I, I believe in prayer. I believe in gifts of the Spirit. I believe in anointed preaching. But I'm telling you that until we get us under control, until we get our priorities right, until we become a vessel of gold that God can use, Come on, somebody. Before I try to change the world, I got to get old Jack Cunningham in shape. Amen? We need to hear this message again. If you, I know you all heard it in person tonight. Listen to it over and over. My church knows about two or three times a year I'll do this. I'll say that's a message right there. You got to hear a bunch of times. Well, folks, this is it right here. This message has got to be heard over and over and over and over again. We've got to hear it until we can control what comes out of our mouth. We've got to keep listening to it until we control how we're going to react to what comes into our ears. We've got to listen to it until we can get control of this old mind that just goes here and there and everywhere. Come on, I want to be used of God, don't you? I want that more than I want anything else. I want to hear it over and over and over again. I want our church to hear it. Brother Rivera, Sister Jane, make it happen. You that are here from other churches, take it to your pastor. Let him hear it. Tell him I, let every, I want everybody in the church to hear it. And if he does okay, if he don't, okay. But I think everybody needs to hear this message tonight. There is no telling. There is no telling what God could do in each of our churches if we just get a hold of what we heard here tonight. Amen? How many of you feel and understand what I'm saying and you're thinking, you know, I believe what the preacher's saying right now. Anybody on, on the same? Okay. Got a lot of people here that are confirming that. God bless everyone. Adam, forgive me for taking the mic and jumping over. I love you, buddy. We don't ever want Pastor to apologize for that. What you heard tonight, young people, listen, this is two of the voices of Pentecost. That's two of the greatest. That They wouldn't say it. I'll say it. It needs to be said. That's two of the greatest that have ever lived. God told me today. We're getting ready for this. Just feel that excitement about everything. And God spoke, and I didn't understand. I'll be honest with you. God said, you tell the people when you have the opportunity to do what the prophet said. 
Two of them came up tonight. Two of them oper operating in apostolic authority and prophetic miracles and prophetic apostolic, again, authority. Two times. You've heard it tonight. One, get in the game, young people. There's a hunger in our youth group, in our hyphen, in our singles. Get in the game. Stop waiting to be invited. It is time. Second thing they said. Amen, amen. Second thing they said. Our hyphen could finish this sentence. We've been on it so many times. It is the vein of the Holy Ghost in this church. Not my will, but yours, God. Not my will. You heard the bishop say it. That's what, he, that's what God said tonight. Not, not your will, Adam. Not your will. Not your will. My will. If you'll just do that, I'll give you your heart's desire. I'll give you what you need to desire. I'll put those things in you. There are some young people here tonight, I promise you, you were called to be a soul winner. There are some missionaries here tonight. God whispered it in your voice. Put it in your mind. I'm telling you, get in the game. But the key to it, they unlocked it for it. The key to it is not my will, but yours. Brother Kenzie said it so perfectly. He said, God has got to be the highest priority, his joy above everything else. Let's raise our hands to the Lord. Let's honor what God's given us. He's been so good to us tonight. God, you've blessed your people. God, we love you. We want this so much, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray everything that was spoken tonight, God, let it get in our mind and in our hearts and in our spirit. Let, us re let it resonate inside of us, God. And Lord, we accept it tonight, Lord, in Jesus' name. Name. Come on, young people. We accept that in Jesus' name. Let's pray it all together. God, not my will, but your will. Not mine, but yours. Amen. Let's clap our hands to him right now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Ricardo is, Pastor Ricardo is going to come in just a moment. He's going to dismiss us. Um, he has a few announcements, but I want to thank all of our hyphen leaders, our singles leaders, our youth leaders, all of the pastors that let you come out. Thank you so much, everyone that came out. Hey, when God's people gets together, amen, great things happen. Let's clap our hands to the Lord one more time. Pastor Rivera. That was pretty real. A couple of a district announcements coming up. There's four big events that are coming in the next couple of months. First one is East Coast Missions Fest. That is at the end of September. It's over at NAC. We're going to have several missionaries coming over here and talking to those of you that are interested in looking at the mission field and, and talking to people. One of them is actually here with us today. I've actually worked with one of them for a while. It is a blessing to be around missionaries. If you love missions, you love missionaries, it's time to get yourself into that game and uh, September the 29th and the 30th at Norfolk Apostolic Church. Falcon, October 13th and 14th. <laughs> this year, Barbara will be excited about this. Pastor Joe Campatella from Florida will be preaching Falcon this year. The youth and hyphen registration is $30 per person, and for the youth workers, it's $15. Don't miss it. Falcon, October the 13th and 14th. The District Signals Rally on October the 20th is at Norfolk Apostolic with an afterburner right after that. Afterburner, 18 plus, no 17 year olds, 18 and over for the afterburner. And finally, for hyphen and youth workers, there's gonna be training over at the campground on November the 10th. For those of you that are working in that area, work with your pastor, talk to your hyphen leader, and if you're part of that team that's gonna go, do not miss it on November the 10th. One more time, let's give glory to God Let's give thanks to God for the word that he brought us today. And let's dismiss ourselves here with prayer. Lord Jesus, we love you. We worship you. We magnify you. We thank you for this wonderful anointed word. Open our heart when we hear it again and again. We get everything we need to get out of this wonderful, wonderful service, this wonderful message. Thank you for bringing Brother Kinsey to us. Thank you for bringing us a word, an unexpected word of not just hope, but of victory and freedom and joy for everybody that's here and for the people outside that desperately need to hear that God loves them. Thank you for your wonderful love and patience with us. We love you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed. Thank you for being here. Remember the four services that are coming up. Put them on your schedule. You do not want to miss them.